I've been working this map for far too long and to be completely honest, six months is a bit of an understatement. It's probably been a little bit more around eight months. Now I'm going to be spending a good chunk of this video justifying all those hours and hopefully you guys will understand why I have been obsessing over this map. But for a lot of you guys, you will know that this map is for my brand new series. And if you are brand new to the channel and watching this video as one of my very first videos, then I honestly cannot think of a better time to subscribe and follow along with the new series because guys, we are finally here. Finally, welcome to Sunset City. If it's not completely obvious by now, this series is based on the west state of Florida. Whilst working on this map, I've become so completely obsessed flying around on Google Earth, seeing different areas that I want to incorporate into the map, looking at different cities and towns and landscape features and the islands surrounding the state, even just trying to include some of the most iconic areas of Florida, you can start to realize why the map has taken so long to create, even though that's just a fraction of why it took so long. Now, in true to Lost 20 style, we're gonna be giving all these places different names and we're gonna be doing things slightly different so that we're just taking inspiration from these places, giving ourselves a bit of creative freedom and also the opportunity to write stories for some of the places we're gonna be building and not feeling too restricted with how things are going to look. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room because I know I'm gonna be reading a bunch of these comments and I know that this is on the tip of everyone's tongue. Isn't this just Grand Theft Auto Vice City? And honestly, that is exactly what I'm going for. I've said it once and I'll say it again, and I'm gonna be saying it for probably my entire YouTube career. I am always gonna be taking inspiration from Rockstar Maps. And I used to say I take inspiration from open world video game maps, but I am honestly usually pretty disappointed with other open world maps. And I think it's because a lot of these other open world maps seem to have a lot of dead space or just areas that have no interest whatsoever. There's no reason to go here. It almost just feels like filler or just areas that feel flat out incomplete. Whereas Rockstar maps, you can tell that they work really hard at creating the perfect open world. And it's not just the details, but you can tell that everything is sitting on the map for a particular reason, for a purpose. And I take a lot of inspiration from that and try to build that into the way that I create these maps. And also the way that the series is going to pan out. Now in saying all that, Grand Theft Auto Vice City was the very first 3D version of Grand Theft Auto that I played. So there is huge nostalgia for me to build a city based on Miami in the 80s. Oh, and obviously we're setting this in the 80s. So yes, this series is gonna be huge amounts of fun. And on top of all those exciting aspects of it, I'm also pumped for the gameplay aspect of it because we're going to be building in a pretty similar style to my last series of Mile Bay. We're going to be playing with money enabled, so we're going to be challenged with financial stress of running a city, but also all the services such as fire and police and keeping land value and education high. All of those aspects are going to play a really big part in the way that we're going to be playing the game, but also the way that I want to develop the map and build our towns and cities, we're going to be working on the entire map from the get-go. Rather than doing small details or focusing on how a particular neighborhood is going to look, we will of course get into those details, but I really want to focus on the entire map. But I guess quite differently to Mile Bay is the amount of depth we're getting into for Sunset City. And by depth, well, I've already mentioned the 80s, but we're also getting into some pretty interesting territory. So we're kicking this series off with not only a bunch of custom assets made by some very talented asset creators, but also some custom brands and companies that are going to be operating within Sunset City and its surroundings. But this series is also going to be very story driven, so ideas and suggestions from you guys in terms of storylines and things that we're going to be building will be put into the episodes, making billboards. I'm also going to be doing a build competition a little later on when I release the map. Yes, I'm going to be releasing the map on the Steam Workshop. But the best and easiest way to get involved is by leaving your comments down below. So definitely get involved in that way because I'll be relying on them for suggestions for future episodes and for the storylines for the places we end up building. So this map, this map that took six bloody months to make. This is the Seminole State. 
a fictional state of the United States of America. This is, of course, based on the state of Florida, but this is where we start getting into a little bit of creative freedom. I like to think of the map broken up into three distinct areas, taking inspiration from different parts of Florida. The southern parts of Florida, the western side, and then the north. The absolute largest natural feature of the Seminole State has got to be the Patana Wetlands. This is a massive swampland spanning nearly half of the main island. It's made up of a variety of different ecosystems, including the expansive grasslands, tall cypress forests, and then the southern mangrove waterways. Feeding into the Patana Wetlands are the windy rivers of the north. They feed into this giant lake that we still need to name. If you've got any name suggestions, hit me up in the comments below. And then continuing our journey down south, to the southern point of the Seminole State are the Seminole Keys. This is a trail of Paradise Islands, beautiful beaches, all connected up with this highway. It's gonna be a very, very fun place to start building in. The east side of the Seminole State is dedicated to Sunset City. It's gonna be an expansive, massive city based on Miami. It'll most probably include more than one city, but we'll get into that nitty gritty stuff a little later on in this series. Following the highway up north, we travel through the largest portion of farmland in the Seminole State. The north is also home to the largest pine forest on the map, as well as numerous islands that are scattered all around the coastline. And then for the rest of the map, look, I'm going to introduce the rest of the map a little later on in the series. I don't want to give you all the information. Let's, uh, let's just keep that as a little bit of a wait and see. So like I said, I've been working on this map for quite some time. In fact, I've been working on it since September last year, which some of you might remember is when my computer crashed and I wasn't able to play the game or make any videos. Well, I started working on it about that time because I was using my iPad and the app Procreate to draw up a bit of an idea of a potential map for a new series. And this was honestly such a game changer. I usually spend ages in front of a computer figuring out what the map's gonna look like. Doing it on Procreate, on my iPad, wherever I liked, was so much easier. And the best thing about it is that I could just import this image straight into the map editor without having to redo anything that I'd already drawn out. And so this is where the map first started. Just in Procreate, I would draw the map up, I'd import it into City Skylines, play around for a little bit and realize the different things that I needed to change or add, or I'd just completely scrap the idea altogether and redo the map. This happened so often. In fact, I spent a really, really long time thinking that I had the map completely down pat and I'd get it into City Skylines and I'd work on it for about a week and then realize, Things just weren't in the right places and I'd have to go back to the drawing board, literally the drawing board, and start again. And man, this was a really big process because the layout had to be so perfect and I realized that by cramming so many ideas into the one map was going to be very, very difficult. So what exactly did I want to include? Uh, let me explain. I wanted to have at least three cities. Two pretty close together, Sunset City and another one, and then another city, potentially inspired by Tampa, off to the side, pretty far away, feeling pretty distant from those two. Between those cities, I wanted there to be the Everglades. Massive, sprawling, natural wonder, and I really wanted to capture how massive this place is, but also leave enough space to incorporate other elements of Florida. And then, talking about a small map, I also wanted this to be an island. Ah, I just wanted this to be an island. Man, I got so hung up on this. Every now and again, I'd connect it back up and just go stuff it. Who cares? It's not a big deal. But I always cared and always disconnected it from the great beyond. And it's an island and I made it work. But I really wanted to make this work because Florida is known for its beaches. And I thought what perfect opportunity to really capture that by doing an island. Plus, I just feel like when you create an island, it's, it's all there. It's, there's nothing beyond that point. Beyond that point is ocean. But when you have an island, you've just got this contained space. But as you can imagine, creating an island was so much harder. But now we've just got this beautiful coastline surrounding the entire map. And I just love that. There were some areas that I absolutely knew that I wanted to include. I wanted Key West to be down below and super remote from anywhere else. I wanted there to be a road, a highway that traveled around the entire perimeter of the map. 
And then with that road, I wanted there to be some sort of massive bridge that sort of bridged these two islands or these two places together, forming this whole bay area within this island. So these are all the ideas amongst so many others that I'm not going to mention, but there is just a lot going in to this map, a lot of ideas that I wanted, and I was being so particular about it that I was having a really hard time getting past these ideas. I think probably because I was working on it to the side, I could just leave it and work on Oceania episodes when I was just getting too frustrated with trying to make it work, and then I'd just come back to it with a fresh idea. But it was, it was definitely pretty tricky. And as you can see, so much of the layout changed within the drawing process. I changed the layout so frequently, the general idea is there, but thinking about where certain things are going to go, uh, in particular how the roads are going to go around the map, I think changed the way that things were progressing pretty quickly. And then the Everglades. Man, the Everglades. Why did I try to create the Everglades within this setting? A few years ago, I did create Miami using vanilla assets for a pretty short vanilla series, and we did the Everglades surrounding this city. But you know, I just did Miami, and it was pretty easy just to have the Everglades surrounding the, the entire city. In fact, it was great. It was really nice and easy. It was a great way to show the entire map because the Everglades are this great barrier for like the natural environment and Miami. But Within this setting, it is really hard because I'm trying to also fit in so much more. Every time I created it, it felt like it didn't flow or didn't fit right. A really big aspect of this map was to make it so that it felt as if it was geographically, it geographically made sense. The Everglades is part of this whole massive ecosystem and for me just to smack it in the middle of a map doesn't really make sense. So what I ended up doing is creating this whole network of rivers and this big lake that gave reason for the wetlands to be there in the first place. And every time I tried to create that within these settings just never worked and it always felt like it didn't work. Not to mention making a wetland within City Skylines. We're gonna get into that detail side of thing a little later on in the series. Something else that is always difficult when creating a map from the ground up is just how big a city or how big some of these towns or even just how big some of these natural features need to be in the context of the rest of the map. So scale plays a really, really big part. Something that I did very early on was I grabbed a screenshot from one of my other cities and used it as a bit of a guide as to how big some cities can get. This was super helpful so that I just knew that a city can be about this size and if I was going to make it any bigger or smaller depending on whereabouts I was going to build a city, you know, for the context of Sunset City, which is going to be the biggest one, I wanted to go a little bit bigger. But something that was also quite difficult was that Miami also extends onto Miami Beach. So we've got this giant bay area and I didn't really have room for a giant bay area in the context of this. So it's interesting to see just how the city has shuffled around, how it was once one location of the map and now it's just down below, just to get a bit of an idea of how big and how small of an area I really need for a city of this size. Once I had the drawing imported into the game, I quickly realized that I was going to have to do a lot of work within Map Editor to totally capture exactly what I wanted. I'm usually pretty careful with the way that I place trees and props within the game just because I don't want to completely kill my FPS, but I realized that I wasn't able to be that conservative when creating the wetlands because every time I did, it just wasn't coming out the way that I wanted to. So I had to try and find this happy medium between pretty detailed and also something that wasn't going to completely kill my PC. And then once I had started, I couldn't really turn it off. I felt like because this area of the map was so detailed, the rest of it had to be as well. But I have to admit, I ended up getting super into it and I ended up looking at heaps of different reference pictures of different environments within Florida and then trying to capture them within different settings on the map, but also trying to make it so that they made sense within the setting and also being fairly unique to that particular area. For example, the Patana wetlands aren't just a giant swampland. I tried to create different types of environments that you would find within a wetland. So you've got sprawling grasslands, you've got mangroves down south. There are areas that are a little bit drier around some of the agriculture. And then we've also got this very unique cypress forest. 
And that pretty much goes for all the different environments on the map. I wanted to try and keep it so that everywhere felt fairly unique and recognizable depending on whereabouts you were. And that also goes for the water. Because we are working with, I mean, we're basing it on Florida, which is, I believe, the flattest state in the US. I could be completely wrong, but it's definitely down there. So I couldn't really justify any mountains. We've got a tiny mountain, but for the most part, the land is very, very flat. But that doesn't mean that under the ocean has to be flat. I've put a lot of detail and a lot of work into the topography of under the ocean so that we've got this coral reef that pops up in areas. We've got sandbanks and tiny islands scattered around the place. And like I said, mangroves that are interacting with the ocean, pretty similar to how mangroves should interact. So there's quite a lot going on underwater and there's quite a lot in terms of uh, trying to make it feel realistic within the setting too. So all the islands and uh, sandbanks and coral reefs should feel like they belong in those areas. That was quite a lot of fun to do, but if you know what it's like working with water within City Skylines, it was a bit of a nightmare. And there's still quite a bit of detail that I want to do around here. Like I would like to create a bit more of a coral reef in particular areas, you know, not just doing it with the map theme, but also placing down some props and seaweed and things like that. But it is definitely super satisfying knowing how much is under there and you can see it because the water color that I've chosen, this turquoise, works really well in this setting because you can see under the water pretty well. And then mixed with the sand tool, which was crazy useful. I mean, really hard to use because it's so sensitive, but I ended up making the largest brush size and turning down the sensitivity to the very lowest and just painting all these areas all along the shoreline and I was able to just mix in some pretty realistic looking sand and then mixed in with the turquoise water and you know concentrating in certain areas and making it look like this current's been pushing it in certain spots too. I mean it was great it worked really well so have a little look at the ocean because there's quite a lot of detail in there. But yeah, I mean, you can see how this has taken so long to put together. I mean, how particular it was about the way that I designed the map and then how detailed everything is. Plus, I really wasn't afraid just to demolish stuff that I didn't like. I mean, I think I spent two weeks working on the Everglades one time and then I decided I didn't like where I was, so I just demolished it. So I changed things quite a lot. And of course, I recorded the whole process and you're actually going to be seeing all that footage, we'll release a lot of that footage throughout the series. So it's not going to be in the next couple of episodes. Actually, the next episode, I mean, we're pretty much just diving into it. We're going to start planning out the city and the city's going to be built pretty quickly. I plan to have the city built pretty early on in the series and then we'll just start adding in those details and connecting places up and, of course, trying to make a profit. I, I don't even know how that's going to work. But the map will be available on the Steam Workshop. After a few episodes, I want to show you the process of creating some of these areas and also introduce you to the map in a much slower pace than usual. You see, there's still quite a lot of the map that I haven't shown you. Florida is not the only place that we're going to be exploring in this series. But I'm going to save all that for another episode. Thank you guys so much for watching the very first episode of Sunset City. I cannot wait to show you the rest of what I've already built and also can't wait to hear some suggestions from you guys. If you want to support the channel, then subscribing or liking the video definitely helps out. Or if you want to go the next step further, then there is a link in the description below to my Patreon page that is the best place to support the channel. Big shout outs to my longest supporters over on Patreon, Kira Floke, Robert Maynard, Bog Tatari, Stephen Hayner, Michael McFarlane, Brandon Nash, Holly Softy, Alec Williams, Christopher C. Penny, Oliver Assis, Nick Garn, and Thibodeau Pinta. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>